Welcome to Fujaira. The excitement is back for the fascinating world of XCAT as the ultra dynamic power boats return to action for the highly anticipated 2022 World Championship. We bet you missed the hair raising spectacle offered by these exceptional and fearless drivers. The wait is over and the UIM XCAT World Championship is back and ready for a full, loaded season with several stops all over the world that will eventually decide who will be the world champions. Certainly after two years of uh, pandemic, uh, uh, we are very much looking forward to a great restart. This is uh, the first uh, race, the first event of uh, 2022. Um, we are planning uh, uh, several events this year. Fujaira, the emirate situated on the Gulf of Amman, which is known for its calm beaches and the picturesque Hajar Mountains, once again hosted the season opener for the World Championship. And it doesn't come as a surprise that this beautiful emirate will be the home of many opening rounds of this championship for years to come. We would like to welcome all the teams, management of XCAT and UIM official to the opening of the season uh, 2022 XCAT World Championship at House of XCAT or Home of the XCAT or we call it Base of XCAT in Fujairah. Fujairah is uh, open arms for everybody and as you know we have a, we signed a contract with the UIM for two years 22, 23 and 24 to opening the season of XCAT always been in Fujairah and uh, we are proud of that uh, contract to have with the UIM and uh, we are so happy to welcome everybody to start with and as you know it's so not easy to start the season after a so long time of the COVID-19 our situation and now everyone back to normal and hopefully everything will be back. Fujera International Marine Club gave to all of us a great welcome. Their usual friendship, hospitality I think is a milestone for uh, all the racers and all the teams. So I'm very grateful to the Fujera International Marine Club for that. Watching the X-Cats thunder just above sea level is an experience of a lifetime. And this year, the level of the competition promises to be even higher and better than ever. Many ambitious teams coming from different countries are ready to fight it out and push their limits while racing for the best result. Before taking to the water, the drivers of the powerboats participated in a brief by the organizers that helped everyone become more familiar with the race course. It was also an opportunity for the participants to spend more time together before competing against each other. Dubai Police, the 2021 world champions with their long and successful tradition in the discipline, are amongst the teams to be watched and one of the favourites for the 2022 XCAT World Championship. Fresh from their 2021 achievement, they returned to Fujairah determined to defend their title. Last year was a good year for us, we won the world title. Uh, we're looking forward for this year, but uh, you know, it's the start of the season. Uh, if everything works fine and you have a bit of luck and you fight for it, you win. If you ever have any doubts about how motivated someone can be, after having just tasted success, the legends of Dubai police, Nadir Bin Hendi and Adi Fadzafrain, made it clear. Never stop striving for the best result possible. We want to beat anyone, so uh, everyone wants to beat anyone, so all the teams are challenging each other, so we are, uh, as Dubai police, we'd like to challenge, I mean, we are here to challenge and, and be challenged and, uh, and have the best for everyone. 
it's good. Uh, it keeps you really working hard, uh, preparing the board. You know, keep on always testing, and and uh, and it's going to be hard on all the competitors. So all the all the teams will be working very hard to achieve till the end. Speaking of teams that have made it to the top, Maritimo is one of the biggest storylines of this brand new season. The world champions of 2019 returned with a brand new member but the same vigour and eagerness to rule the waters again and ready to make some waves with their proven skill set. It's been a pretty long off season so um, uh, you know, it's really exciting to be back. Paul is a uh, new with the team uh, along with uh, some other Norwegians amongst the team in, in other positions as well so um, we're already uh, getting on really well on the boat. Paul and I have raced before many years ago and uh, you know, have a lot of experience together so yeah I think we're, uh, we're very prepared and, and ready and uh, looking forward to the season. I'm looking forward to it. It's been a long pause because of the Covid situation and I've been a little bit sick so uh, it's great to be back. and. Uh, I'm very happy to be with Tom and Maritimo team. Yeah, I know them from before, as he said, so um, it's a really good uh, uh, possibility to, to do well. So I will try to do my best and hopefully we can uh, uh, be among the top teams all the time. That's our goal. The UIM XCAT World Championship has changed a lot since Maritimo last participated, but this doesn't change the team's goals and ambitions. The drivers of Maritimo are confident and sure that they can fight to the end for another trophy. We want to do things right. We want to, you know, we want to be on top. So yeah, we're working hard for that. So yeah, that's our goal this year: is uh, you know to be fighting for the top of the podium. It's pretty. It's a very close fleet. There's a lot of fast boats. So you know, the mid pack has really elevated. I think since 2019, there's uh, there's probably five or six boats now that can fight for top spot on, on any day, um, you know, so not just two or three. So um, I think it'll be a, a really big fight all season. The action in Fujaira started with the practice session, where the teams had the chance to test the waters and their boats for a first time in order to be ready for what was about to follow with pole position sessions and official races. I think we have a good test this morning. We need to work, uh, of course, on propeller because we received the uh, three new set, but uh, we cannot work on it. So uh, we will choose uh, for tomorrow the right one. And now we have one idea where we are. I think we are in good position. We can compete, we can compete. We are happy because we know we can compete for the podium. The boats were back in the water to run two timed laps each, which would decide the starting grid for the next day's race. After the pole position race was completed, the two boats of Abu Dhabi had managed to secure the best possible result for the opening race of the season, and all of the teams got a much better taste of the course. The feeling with my Trotman Rosario brother is really good because the boat uh, catch the good balance in the, in the circuit. Uh, I take the good first lap uh, because the situation of the sea is uh, really, really flat. Uh, and after I catch the another time lap, but the fish is, uh, is better. But I'm really happy and I'm really concentrated for tomorrow for the, for the race. The first day of action concluded in spectacular fashion with the Boat Parade, an institution for XCAT events that gives the spectators a chance to feel much closer to the drivers and their impressive powerboats. The competitors also have the opportunity to spend an afternoon without the pressure that usually accompanies them during a Grand Prix. 
The time for race one had finally arrived and excitement was at a whole new level. Race organizers have introduced to the XCAT races something new. This is the X point, making overtaking easier and the races even more interesting and demanding by adding more strategy options. Well, the X point lap was, um, was put into the course for a reason. And the reason is sometimes in the tighter circuits, you get one boat behind the other boat and it's very, very difficult to pass out. So the X point lap is a shorter course where you can take in twice in the race, you can cut inside. So if you're catching up on a boat and you know you won't have the opportunity to pass for half a lap, you can use your X pint lap, your shark lap, and just cut inside to give you clean water and away you go. So it's, it's just giving the teams more opportunities to pass, but more importantly then, that's for safety as well. But then for the spectators, they now see these boats cutting inside and changing position. It's not one boat in front and everybody else following like a, a row of ducks, it's actually more interactive, so it brings better racing. So anyways, with the X-Point and then the long lap, um, we're going to be able to, that's what it is, we're going to be able to dictate the race to the rest of the field, hopefully. If, as long as we're fast, we get a good start, then we can dictate the race. We can make the long lap or the short lap or the X-Point laps when we want to and when it's most advantageous. Um, but now with the X-Point, it could get sticky. If you only have a five or six second lead after two or three laps, they could go X-Point and then end up in front of you and slow you down. Like I said, there's many, uh, it's the first time we do it, so there's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see, hopefully our strategy is good. The start is always the most exciting moment in XCAT racing, and this one made no exception. The boats blasted off to the first gate, playing it safe, while in the second gate, the tension of the start produced some tough fights for positions. Two, two, two offshore took the first win of the season after a thrilling battle on the water. And after the race on the green table, also propelled Team GB to their first top three finish and Dubai police from last on the grid to third on the podium. Well, the day was good. Uh, was not, not very rough, but uh, difficult to race course. Unfortunately, we don't found the correct setup this morning. We try something different today, but we are not happy about the setup, but we do a great job. Oh, the performance was good. I mean, we, we leave something in the land because we don't prepare perfectly the boat. Uh, we have a good engine this time. We try a new set of prop that we, we never tried before. We, have, we take this risk. We are paid 80%, not 100%, but we are happy for, for this. You, you should have seen the smile. It was from here to here, <laughs> and I haven't stopped since. It's just, I've never ever thought I'd see a podium through x because I've only just started. This is, I've actually acquired me full license from today. Yeah. Which, so I'm a big boy now. Yeah, <laughs> he's actually got his full license. Welcome to x -Cat. Yeah. The secret behind the powerboat's success are the extremely efficient two Mercury Racing 400 ROS outboard engines, producing a whopping 400 horsepower each. This allows the boats to reach speeds of over 200 kilometers an hour. The 400 ROS is based on the Mercury 400R. It's a supercharged six-cylinder engine. It uh, makes 400 horsepower. What makes the 400 ROS unique is it has a special short midsection uh, that's just designed for offshore racing. So it's an exclusive power for the XCAT series. Uh, these engines take a lot of abuse offshore. You see them jumping across waves at 120 miles an hour uh, for race after race. And we have a full team here to support the engines, help the teams maintain them, fix any problems they have. And uh, we've been racing in this series now for years and it's great to be a partner with the uh, XCAT series. Mm -hmm. 
XCATS officials, in cooperation with the representatives of Mercury Racing, have tried to ensure a level playing field, making it impossible for someone to customise the engine in a way that would affect the race's overall result. Top four teams, when they come in, they park their boats, they get out of the boat, turn it off, they can't touch it. We come in, we plug in the laptop, we check every engine on every boat to make sure that everything is to factory spec and nothing has been modified. So all the teams can be confident that everybody is using the same, same engines. So there is a very strict set of rules to what they can do, and uh, that's the boat and the engine. And so there's there's pretty narrow range that they can go in and modify the engine. And part of that, obviously, is to have parity from all the teams, and then also so that the engines stay durable. Because if they turn up the RPM, they turn up the power, the engines aren't going to last. So we want them to have a durable engine so that they're on the water for every race. Each team has a mechanic who is responsible for everything that has to do with the engine and its performance, as well as maintenance. One of the most important and challenging aspects of the preparation for an XCAT event is the preservation of the boat and, of course, its engine. Uh, we look at looking after the engines, uh, all the daily checks, um, come down in the morning, obviously fuel up, check all the levels, check everything's still tight from the day before and get everything ready to go. Every decision in an XCAT team is taken after a discussion between everyone in the crew, and this is the secret for the teams that want to be successful at any course and under any circumstances. We decide as a team in the morning between the engineers, the drivers and myself of what prop we're going to test first. We write it all down, we go out, we do a practice, I come back with all the data from the practice and then we would say to you guys, can we change the prop that didn't quite work? So they, they actually change the prop on the crane, the boat is lifted, prop change like a sort of a Le Mans pit stop. Straight back in. <laughs> Straight back in, test again, data and then we would come back after practice and actually all sit down as a team and say, right, for pole position, we're going to go for them. Need, yeah. Through the years, the XCAT has managed to earn a reputation for being a thrilling yet safe competition. Despite the fact that driving these extremely quick powerboats is not the easiest thing, the way they are shaped and the experience of the drivers make them as safe as they could be. A lot, I mean obviously it starts with a six point racing harness, uh, the seats that are suspension seats installed properly, neck and head restraints, helmets, life jackets, escape hatch on the bottom of the boat so that if we go upside down we can get out the bottom of the boat, while wow, water deflectors on the windows and on the top of the canopy so that it doesn't crush the canopy. All these things are learned from previous accidents and wrecks. As the teams were getting ready for the final day of action in Fujaira, the organisers put on a glitzy gala that allowed participants to leave any of their racing worries aside for a little while and enjoy some quality time with each other. The final and decisive day of action in the luxurious Fujada International Marine Club had arrived, with the powerboats and their drivers being about to showcase their skills for one last time in this exciting season opening Grand Prix. The day started with the pole position session that is always hugely significant as it decides the starting grid and provides a first taste of what is about to come in the official race. 
we want to go out today. We, we, we will push, but we want to keep the boat the right way up and make sure we finish the race. We don't want to be too cocky because we come second yesterday. That was yesterday. Today's a different race. So we're going out prepared for what the conditions are going to be. And we just want to make sure we bring the boat home. The first Grand Prix of the 2022 season was about to be decided and everyone was holding their breath ahead of the final race. Leading from start to finish, Matteo Nicolini and Tommaso Poli of Team 6 put on a masterclass, taking their first win of the season. They kept powering ahead, making use of the clear but choppy waters in front of them, bouncing around on the waves, yet still putting distance between themselves and everybody who was chasing them. Today we did the Operation Hasta la Vista, which means you get in front and you never see anyone else. We really wanted this strategy. We, we fought hard for it. We took risk when we had to take risk. The order of the day was to stay in front, regardless of short lap, long lap. Our radio man did a great job keep us in front because of course you know, there is changing times with these short laps and it worked out it worked out we we never lost concentration we just did our job right it was a tough race it was rough out there and uh, at the end uh, we never saw anyone uh, today we we have a good a good idea to went out in the morning uh, after the pool after uh, to check the sea the sea was changed completely from the pole position, pole position was uh, flat and fast, but uh, it started to be bumpy. Uh, we decided to change the setup of the boat, balance the boat, and that uh, was a really good uh, choice to make our boat uh, very competitive. So in the start, we can uh, take a kind of advantage that we keep for all the race. Tommaso make a really great job, and uh, we have uh, the dream race. Start in front and finish in front. The newly introduced X point procedure with its short lap in combination with its longer brother paid off by changing the rankings more often during the race, with 222 Offshore managing to grab the second spot from Foresti and Saudi in the very last lap, after the latter had clinged to the spot for the most part of the race. We're happy to finish. It was very hard on the boats and the equipment, and um, yeah, good to, be, good to finish. Uh, the long was long, the short was short, but it was bouncy. Giovanni on the throttles did a great job as always. The team on shore got it all prepped. So, yeah, and, and Maro, who's the team manager on the, on the cons, picked the right time to do it, so it worked out well. Dubai police showed strength and poise, making their way up to fourth place after a series of technical challenges on both pole sessions had them starting among the last on the grid. The Kuwaiti team who started last performed really, really well and made it to the top five. The prize giving ceremony was the perfect way to cap off an incredible event. The winners were crowned while everyone else enjoyed what was on offer in one of XCAT's most popular destinations, Fujairah. Sheikh Mohammed bin Hamid bin Mohammed Al Sharki, Crown Prince of Fujairah, honoured the winners of round one of the 2022 UIM XCAT World Championship, which was held in the Emirate. Another thrilling XCAT season started in incredible fashion. Amazing power boating battles on the water, great social events on shore, and competitors of the highest level created a blend that made this Grand Prix unforgettable. It was intense, 
It was unpredictable. It was XCAT. Everyone is already looking forward to the next one, and we'll see you there.